TV allows you to create cool spotlights in the fog effects or volumetric lighting as they're officially called. But that is not what this tutorial is about. This tutorial starts once you've already created your volumetric effects according to another tutorial because I don't like copying other people's work. Can we get these with an alpha layer? Well, yeah. But there are a few limitations. We can't light it with an HDRI for a start and we can't light it with a sun either. We're limited to spotlights, point lights or light bulbs as I prefer to call them and area lights. This also means that once we go to the world settings, we have to set the color of the world to black. And uh, if we uh, render a frame now. And alpha. There we go. So there are two things we want to combine to create the alpha layer. We want to use the brightness of the image. That will mean the lights are uh, opaque and the blackness is transparent but we also want to select all the solid objects and make them opaque as well. Fortunately there's a little hack we can do. As it happens mist is not affected by fog. Yeah that doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm going to first of all I'm going to select the camera and I'm get, going to set the end of it which controls how far objects can be and still appear on camera and I'm just going to set that to a nice 10,000. And I'm also going to go into the uh, render layers option or view layers as I, should, as I should now be calling them. And in the passes, I'm going to tick mist. And now if I go back to world settings, a mist pass tab has opened up. Now we want, we're not using the mist as mist here. This is very simple old fashioned mist as I refer to it. It's basically used for making objects in the distance fade into a certain color. It's actually incredibly useful and quite quick, but we're not using it for that. We're basically using it to separate objects from nothingness. So what I'm going to do is I happen to know that there are no objects further than 500 meters away. Also, the uh, distance for the camera is a thousand meters, so we won't have any trouble with the two of those numbers running into each other. And quadratic doesn't really matter. I mean, maybe linear is faster. I don't know. There probably isn't much in it. I'm going to change that to linear for the hell of it. And uh, now I'm going to press F12 again. And now I'm going to pop into composite nodes or compositing. And I'll tick the tick boxes. Use nodes, auto render and backdrop. I'm going to drag that out a bit. I'm going to hold down shift and drag across that line, thus cutting it in half. Add an output viewer and connect that to there as well. And now press V until that's entirely in screen so I can see what I'm doing. Let's have a look at the mist pass. Damn it. Let's have a look at the mist pass. And here we see it separated it into objects and nothing, which is great. I mean, ideally we want to kind of invert this. So I'm going to invert this with an invert. I mean, you might use a color ramp. It looks to me like this is not entirely white, but it's kind of hard to tell. If it's not entirely white, we want a, uh, a color ramp going in the wrong direction would help rather than an invert. But let's see how well this works, as I believe an invert is mildly faster. We also want a uh, set alpha node, which I'm going to search for. So let's um, put this inverted into there and this image into there, which is OK. The other option would be to have the image going into both into there and the alpha point there, which is basically using the darkness as the alpha. What we want to do is combine this mist with this image to get our alpha. And that's pretty simple. All we need to do is get a maths node in the case, which I'm going to, so that's connected to there and there. And add would work, as would um, maximum. I'm going to go for maximum there. But I'm also going to press clamp. I'm not quite sure what happens when alpha gets above one, but it does seem to sort of break things slightly. So clicking that clamp button will probably help. And now 
that's it. It's slightly quicker than the last one, and we can uh, set it, set our render frames, and render out a video. You can put your things with alpha layers on a website made by my mate Steve Withington, aka Ddar.org, who is a very talented designer, and I expect a lot from a website. I come up with all kinds of stuff, and thanks to Steve's expert website design, it's possible to put it into categories and make it all make sense. And I'm not the only person who's doing this. His websites work on tiny little screens like this and huge screens like this. Get in touch with Ddar.org and start making a professional website. I've already done a tutorial on how to create TV with alpha layers using Blender's Smoke. And alpha. If you can think of something that's hard to do with EV and alpha, please tell me and I'll string some node together and see if I can make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah.